off the coast of Africa. And we just told you the latest report had the, the captain jumping off the lifeboat, trying to get away, but then quickly recaptured by the pirates. Well, to get the latest in all this and the feeling from the government right now, we have Congressman Joe Sestak from Delaware County with us here, who also happened to be an admiral in the Navy for years, so you know a thing or two about going into these waters and getting people out alive. Um, what is your initial response to hearing that this guy got to the point where he jumped off this lifeboat trying to get away? This is a pretty brave individual mm. without any doubt. And he would have just jumped off while they were all alert. Obviously, there was probably they were sleeping. He thought he could get quietly away. It was probably in the middle of the night that he did it. Um, if you jump into an ocean, and I have, let me tell you, you don't go very far very fast. And I'm sure the ship was about 100 yards off and we couldn't bring the two together. The key here is, however, is I think there will be a negotiated peaceful solution to this. The question is, what do the pirates get? Now, these are criminals. They're not terrorists. Mm -hmm. The issue here is do we, we want to minimize it to the release, and maybe they can get away free, because the French commandos, after they have negotiated a release, later took down the pirates. See, I was going to ask you about that, about the mindset of the pirates. Obviously, they have a vested interest that they care about their lives and staying alive, so they want to keep the man we're looking at here, the captain, safe. They didn't harm him, obviously. We haven't heard of that he's been harmed since he's been, you know, they brought him back on the boat. So can you talk about then the strategy? Obviously, the FBI is involved. What are you trying to do here? There's a language barrier, but are they just negotiating, trying to, you know, what, what's the process yeah, like? The FBI, who is very well trained in this, the U.S. Navy called them in, will continue to have very hard, firm negotiations, enticing them. On the phones, or like how, how are they doing They this? have communications with them several different ways. We have loudspeakers that they can talk, talk across the water to them. They have a satellite phone. They also have communications that can go via shore because they're already established pirate negotiators. They have their own negotiators. I mean, they own, right now they have six other nation ships that they have there. They have, by and large, treated their hostages nicely. They give them goat meat, etc. Doesn't mean the best of situations. The key here is this can be brought about in a peaceful way, and it doesn't mean if they have free uh, safety going back, as the French commandos did for theirs, that we won't get them eventually. Hmm. With all the problems in the world, especially when it comes to Iran and this nuclear problem that we saw come, you know, right to the front burner yesterday, how frustrating is it is that we're bogged down with pirates? Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is almost ridiculous. You know, we call our baseball team the pirates across <laughs> the state, and, and and it's in the movies and all this, but it's a real problem now. Hundreds and hundreds of years later when we thought it was Absolutely. all over. You know, it's very important, though, to keep in mind that the United States Constitution says we will, quote, raise armies when needed, but maintain navies. Why? Mm -hmm. The Constitution was written during the Barbary Pirates period. Mm -hmm. If there's anything else the United States Navy has to do, is have control for the safety of the commons, the international commons of the seas. This is our number one responsibility. We are presently now deployed. We have about a dozen ships in the Persian Gulf. Why? Why only four off Africa? Second, Secretary Gates made a significant announcement several days ago before this hostage situation of this, these pirates. He said, we want to buy more small ships for the Navy, littoral combat ships, and unmanned air vehicles that could be looking down, dwelling for 24 hours, see hundreds, thousands of square miles, and link to one mothership and say, here comes a pirate. Where? That type of transformation is actually needed to address this issue. Oh, that's what I was going to say to wrap this up. Where do you see this going? We were talking with Congressman Andrews. Um, at this point, they can't carry guns, right? So I think there's some concern that perhaps they're outmanned. Now that you have the attention of the U.S., uh, you know, the American people, um, you have a sense you have our men and women involved here. Where do you see this going? It's, it's, a, it's a shame, but it is going to mean that the Navy will, without any question, put the proper resources there. The Navy is just about to produce an unmanned air vehicle that can do what I just spoke about. Should they be moving around on this? Absolutely. 99% of all uh, cargo in the world travels by sea. If we can't have the image of being able to control the flow of commerce, then what is our Navy really for? And so we've got to do that first. Don't get me wrong. We want the right half to take on any type of other Navy. But this is our primary responsibility in the Navy. We need to do this right. And let everybody know, nobody can do mischief on the seas. All right. Well, Congressman Joe Sestek, I know you spent most of your career keeping mischief at bay at the seas. <laughs> and uh, we're lucky to have you in Congress. Thanks for having me. Don. All right.